In this video, you are going to learn how to make an enemy that will slow down Pac-Man when he touches him. So it's time to take our game to the next level. We want to add some enemies so that uh, the game is more challenging to play as you try and collect all of the dots. And the first one we're going to add is an enemy that when Pac-Man touches it, uh, he will slow down um, for 10 seconds. So it's sort of the opposite of our lightning bolt bonus that speeds him up. Um, so in order to do this, we need to create a new sprite for our enemy. So let's go to the sprite editor. Okay, and we're gonna draw. Now, traditionally, the enemies in Pac-Man are little ghosts, but you don't have to use a ghost, but I'm going to in this case. So I'm going to start with um, a bit of a filled in circle. Okay, this is gonna be like the top of the head. And then I'm going to use a filled in rectangle to do most of the body. Uh, so like this. And then I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm just gonna add some eyes. So we could get a white fill and put some little eyes in there. And another one over here perhaps. It's a bit droopy this eye. Might just lift it up slightly. And, um, yep, still not perfect, never mind. And I'll add some little pupils with a brush. So you can have a bit of fun here drawing up your, your ghost as you like. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do before, I'm going to cut out uh, at the bottom some like little, um, I don't know what you call them, I suppose they're a bit like feet. But before I do that, I need to duplicate my ghost. So let me just do that. Um, so I'm going to duplicate it and you'll see why now. So if I grab, I've still got my, so I'm going to grab the eraser tool. Okay, and I'm going to just draw some sort of jaggedy lines that will sort of be like his feet. Okay, so that's on the first one. And then I'm going to do the same on the second costume, but going in like the opposite direction. This is a bit different, so he's got possibly more there. But as we sort of move between those two, it'll give the impression that it's it's like he's moving. I might just change this one slightly so it looks like he's got a bit more there. Okay, it's not perfect, but it'll do the job. So there's our new sprite created. Um, he's obviously far too big, so again we can grab the shrink tool and make him nice and small so that he fits in. Still a bit tall, let's just move him down one more. There we go, there he is and uh, we need to give him a name. So let's go and name our new sprite. So go to info and let's call him slow down ghost. Okay, so one thing I want to do with this little ghost is um, I don't want him to rotate when he goes back and forth or up and down like Pac-Man does because it will look like he's walking on his head. So in order to change that, I'm going to, where it says rotation style here in the info for this sprite, I'm going to change that and um, I'm going to click on this little blue, on this dot here and that basically disables any rotation from happening so he won't flip over on his head. Okay, so why don't you go and do the same? So you're going to create a new sprite. This sprite is uh, for your ghost. Okay, you can draw him however you like, uh, but make give him two costumes so that you can give the effect of animated walking and don't forget to give him a name and make sure that he's set not to rotate. Wonderful, okay, so now that you've got your sprite we need to do a few things. We need to make him appear uh, when we want him to and we need to make him disappear when we don't want him on the screen anymore and we need to make him move around the screen. So in order to do those things we're going to go to his script and the first one I'm going to do is let's use another event to hide and show our enemy. So I'm going to grab a when I receive, we need a new message and this message is going to be show slow down ghost. Okay? And when I receive show slow down ghost, um, understandably I want to go to looks and I want to show. And we'll have a counterpart to this, so another event when I receive new message, hide, slow down ghost. I want to go to looks and set that to hide as well. Okay, so you go and add those little scripts to your sprite now. Mm -hmm. 
Wonderful, okay. Well, now we want to make our ghost move. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just set the animation so that it looks like he's uh, walking along. So after we've shown him, this is very similar to what we did with Pac-Man. Let's get a forever loop, okay? And we're going to just change. So that's under control and grab forever. We're gonna go back to looks and let's get the next costume. And we want to introduce a little delay so that it doesn't happen all too quickly. So we put wait and let's make it 0.1 seconds. So if I double click on this, we can see what effect it has. And you'll see there he is. It looks like he's sort of wiggling his legs, um, which is just what we want. Now I want to make him move. I would like him to start here, go to this corner, down to the bottom, back up to this corner and back to his starting place again. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another event listener that's gonna listen out for when we want to show the ghost because I want to start another process that happens at the exact same time as this one, but because this has a weight in it, I have to use a, this is effectively what we call a parallel process. It happens at the same time as that one, but it won't be bothered by the fact that this one has got a pause and a wait. Otherwise, our ghost's motion would be very stuttery. So um, don't worry too much about that. Just go along with what I'm doing for now. So here we are. We've got when I receive slow ghost down. And the first thing we want to do is determine, well, where is his initial position going to be? So if we set his position where we want him to start, then we go to motion. I can grab the go to block. And because I've just moved him, the value of the go to block will be the position he's currently in. So that's ideal. So we want to go to there. Then we want another forever block because his actual motion, once he's in the right place, we want him to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth forever. So we use a forever loop. And in order to actually move him, we're gonna use these uh, glide blocks. So if you move him to where you want your enemy to sort of the first point you want your enemy to reach, so that's this corner, my glide box, uh, block, sorry, my glide block updates to reference that location on the screen. So I can drag that in, and I think to get from there to there in one second is pretty quick. So let's change this to something a bit slower, like uh, five seconds. And then once he's here, the next place I want him to go is back to here again. So, or sorry, down to here. So if we move him there, then the glide block updates and we can bring it in with the new location. Notice the Y value is different. It's negative Y because we've moved on the Y axis downwards and uh, the zero line is sort of right bang in the middle for Y and it's bang in the middle for X as well. So we're into the um, negative X, negative Y space here. Okay, and you can actually see that as I move my mouse around, the X and Y coordinates at the bottom just down here, they update to tell you as well. So anyway, we've moved our little chap down here and I've put in the glide block for that position. And again, uh, let's give him five seconds to get there. Now, if I just left it there, um, he would immediately glide straight back to here, but he would do it by the nearest sort of diagonal and that would look a bit wrong. So we need to now send him back up to this corner, pop another glide block in here. We'll give him five seconds to do his journey and one final glide back to his starting point. And again, we give him five seconds to do that. So let's double click and see what happens and see if it works. So here he is, he's gliding over from his start point to his first corner. Then he glides from there down to his second destination. Then he glides back up to his third destination, and that is um, back to that corner. And then the fourth destination is right back to his starting point again. And he goes back around. So that's working great. So again, why don't you take a moment now to do the same on yours? Okay, remember the trick is move your enemy to the place you want it before you then drag the glide block onto, uh, into your script. And as long as you've moved the enemy first, then the glide block will be updated and will have the coordinates that you need. Brilliant, okay. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to add the code that's actually gonna slow Pac-Man down 
when he touches our enemy. Now this is really, really similar code to uh, what we use with our sprite to speed Pac-Man up. So if it doesn't make sense to you, if I rush through it, just go back and watch that video again. Um, but what we need is another um, show slow down ghost event listener. Because again, this is another process that's gonna kick off as soon as this little ghost appears. And we want another forever loop. So we're gonna be always checking. And we're gonna say if he is touching, and I've got to scroll down to Pac-Man. If he's touching Pac-Man, at the bottom of my list, if he's touching Pac-Man, then I want to change the speed to one. So let's get data, and we'll say set speed to one, and then we're going to wait for 10 seconds and then I'm gonna set speed back to two again, which is the default speed of Pac-Man. Now, if I did that, that would work. The only slight downside is that um, for as long as Pac-Man is touching the enemy, um, it will sort of start that 10 second uh, delay up again. And that does seem a bit harsh. If he's already um, slow and he can't get out of the way of the enemy, it's, it's sort of going to trigger off again, and that does seem a bit a bit of a harsh penalty. So I'm going to add a little bit more code just to make things a bit fairer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if his speed is not 1, then do this stuff. But if it's already been set to 1, i.e. he's already sort of facing the punishment, then let's not do this again, let's just ignore things. So the easy way to do that is we can put in an if block around here, and we're going to say if, and I need this operator not, and then I need an equals operator, and I can say, we can grab speed, and we can say, if speed is not equal to 1, then set speed to 1, wait 10 seconds and set speed to 2, but if speed is already 1, then this will just be ignored and no further punishment will be inflicted on our Pac-Man. So, um, why don't we just see if this works? So I'm going to start things off. Ah we've done something wrong, our, our little man has stopped, and that's because I haven't put the code in, which is actually gonna start him moving when the game begins, so I need to add that to my stage. So if I go to my stage, um, when green flag is clicked, we do all these things. Uh, in fact, actually, what I might do is because basically our enemy was going to appear at the same time as our dots, if we go back to our enemy, we can say, when I receive show dots, then I want to, at the same time as showing the dots, I want to show the slow down ghost. Let's see if this works now. That's better, so he's now moving as I move things around. So I'm gonna deliberately go into him, and what happens? Yep, I've slowed down. And um, if I get out of his way, in a minute I should speed up again. I say a minute, should be a matter of seconds. Yep, there we go, we've sped up again. So that's working. Um, but it'd be nice to have an extra sort of indicator, maybe a little message that flashes up on the screen saying slow-mo or something, while that is having an effect on me. So I'm gonna do that in just a minute, but before I do, why don't you, again, make the changes you need to make to yours, test it, check it works, and come back and I'll show you how to do that sign while he's being slowed down. Great stuff. Okay, uh, to make a sign then that's going to appear up here and it's going to say slow-mo whenever Pac-Man has been slowed down, uh, we need to make a new sprite because the sign is going to be a sprite. Um, so we create a sprite and we can use the text tool and I'm going to choose for this font, I'm going to choose marker and I'm going to make it yellow so it stands up nicely against my black and I'm going to just click in here and let's type in slow-mo. Okay, now it's not very easy to see on this white background, but I've written in slow-mo, and I want to duplicate this. So I've got slow-mo in yellow, and I've got another one in yellow, but I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna fill this one in in red. So I get my paint bucket, I grab the red, and I can click, and it'll change that from yellow to red. So if I zoom out now, you can see I've got slow-mo in yellow, slow-mo red, slow-mo yellow, slow-mo red, and I'm gonna want to set a little script going 
that's going to make those alternate. First I'm just going to move this and put it in position. That's great. Okay, so let's add um, that to, or sorry, why don't you go and do that for yours. So you're just making a, a sprite. Oh, I didn't name it. What a mistake. Slow-mo sign, let's call it. So you need to do the same. You need to create a new sprite called slow-mo sign, which has two costumes. Okay, and um, but just make the first one using the text. Then when you've done one, duplicate it. And in your second one, fill it in. The reason you want to duplicate it is that it means that it will be in exactly the same position on the sprite which will stop it looking like it's jumping around. Okay, go do that and come back. Great, okay so you've got your sign ready to go, we just need to add the animation. So let's go to the scripts tab and a few things we need to do. First of all, when we start the game, we don't want this showing, so we're going to grab when green flag is clicked, let's hide it, just because we don't want it saying slow-mo all the time. And we're going to use an event, again, to control when it appears, so we need to you say when I receive, and a new message, and this message is going to be show slow-mo sign. So when I receive show slow-mo sign, I want to show and I want to start the animation, so again we need a forever loop, so it keeps looping round and round. And we're going to be changing costumes, so we go to looks, next costume, and we're going to put a little pause in there between each iteration. And so we just give it 0.1 seconds of pause, let's double click and see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we need another one which is going to hide this, so if I go back to events, when I receive new message, hide, slow-mo sign, and grab the looks, and we're going to hide. And I can double click and test that. Yeah, fantastic, that's done that. So when we're showing, it will look like this, and when we're hiding, it disappears. That's great. Uh, so we need to now do that to yours. So why don't you take a moment to pause and do what I've just done with your scripts for your slow-mo sign. So that's setting it to hide when the green flag is clicked, uh, creating a new message, and when that message is received, it will show itself and it will start this little animation. And when we uh, want to hide it again, we have another message for hide slow-mo sign, which will hide. Great stuff. Okay, well, currently, we have our sign, we've got our code for our sign, but it's not going to be uh, triggered off by the ghost yet. So we need to change the ghost code in order to do that. So that's quite easy to do. All we need to do is go back to our ghost sprites. And where we're setting the speed to one, um, we just need to kick off a little message to tell that sign to appear. So we can go to events and broadcast the message that says show slow-mo sign and we're going to wait 10 seconds, we're going to set the speed back to 2, and when we set the speed back to 2, we broadcast hide slow-mo sign. Okay, so again, take a moment and just make those two quick changes to yours. Fantastic, right, all that's left now is for us to test to see if this works. So, I'm going to start my game off, and I'm going to go and run into my little enemy and I'm going slow, the slow-mo sign is showing which is great and after 10 seconds that should disappear and I should be going quicker again. Let's see, there we go, that's working. Lovely stuff. Okay, well hopefully yours is doing the same things. Um, you might have come up with a slightly different enemy. Um, you might want to create a couple of these. Okay, you can just duplicate your little enemy and you could place it elsewhere on the stage. If you do do that, you're going to need to change this code here so that it goes to a different location when it, the game starts and it glides to different points on your maze. But apart from that, all the other code you can reuse. And um, you might want to do that to make the game even more challenging. In our next video, we're going to add some more ghosts. Uh, we're going to add a ghost that will kill Pac-Man if he touches Pac-Man and it'll be game over. Um, but that ghost is going to be hidden, but there'll be another ghost, which when we touch that ghost, it reveals the killer ghost. Okay, so that will be a nice bit of fun added extra to our game. See you then.